So, hello everyone and welcome to the Comfy Quiz part two. Um, I know we've got some people already on YouTube, so hello. Please do let me know um, what your team names are tonight by commenting on the side and uh, where you're from. I always love to hear, so please do make sure you message and I'll make sure I say um, a big shout out to you all and say a big hello. Hello to everyone on Facebook as well. Same again, please do comment. I always love to um, read your comments, see how you're getting on. So make sure you put your team names on there, um, who you're doing the quiz with this evening, and uh, we'll see who is going to be crowned the Comfy Quiz winner, which is exciting. But how is everyone? I hope you are all okay. Um, hi, Carolyn. Hope you're all right. Hi, Fran and Steve. Thank you for joining. Um, we have got somebody in my ear because it's it's a bit sly um, on Facebook and YouTube with the comments, but do comment and um, hopefully I will get fed them through to me so I can say a big hello to you all as well. Um, hello, Jules and Andy. <laughs> um, oh, let's go for it. It's lots of hellos. Hi, Callum Buttons. Hope you're okay. So, um, it was VE day yesterday, obviously. So this is my fancy dress for this evening to um, for VE day. Did you have any street parties? Was you out in the glorious sunshine? Um, do let me know. I always love to know what you've all got up to. Hi, Sammy. Hope you're all right. <laughs> and um, I don't know if we've had any comments yet on YouTube. Yeah, but if you're on YouTube, please do comment as well. Always love to hear from you. So please do comment how you all are today. Let's have a look. We've got some more. We've got hi Pamela. Hi Andy, Ali, and Thomas are oh, joining Carolyn Richard all the way from Vancouver. Amazing. Hope you're okay and keeping well and safe over there as well. But I hope everyone is all okay. Please do let me know. Make sure you've all got your um, pen and paper at the ready. I hope you've got a drink ready as well, ready to join in the quiz this evening. We've got uh, Cloister Drive crew are playing along on YouTube. Hello. Hope you're okay. <laughs> oh, thank you all for joining us. It's really nice to hear where you're all from and where you're all playing from as well. So um, thank you for joining us. If you if you are um if you didn't take part in the comfy quiz last time then welcome um if you did take part then thank you for coming back and joining us for part two we've got hi from andy and nicola and king's heath hope you're okay keep going oh we've got some more hi lily hope you're okay as well <laughs> got hi from the bristol reeds Hello. You see me going between two. It's just because of Facebook this side. Hello, all of Facebook crew. And we've got YouTube this side. Hello, all of YouTube crew. <laughs> so the quiz starts at half past, um, but we'll let people join us um, before we start. And then I'll go through a few rules. Hi, Sally. Thank you very much. I didn't know what to wear this time, so I went for these because obviously I had a rabbit. It was Easter last time we did this quiz, so I had some fabulous um, bunny ears, so I was able to to wear them. But I thought, VE day, I'll wear the flags today. Who else we've got joining us? Hello, Martin. Hi, Richard and Carol. Hope you're okay. <laughs> there we go. So we have uh, six rounds of questions for you this evening. Um, so hopefully you enjoy them. I've learned from last time not to do a picture quiz. So don't worry, you're not going to have to be squinting at the screens to try and see any pictures this time. You'll be happy to know. Um, I know last time we had a few issues on YouTube, but hopefully we've got them sorted. But if anything does happen on YouTube, we are live on Facebook as well. So please do pop over to there if anything happens, but keep our fingers crossed that nothing will this time. Hello from the Ross and Y Reads. Hello to the uh, Sherman family from Kings Heath. Hi, Vicky, Jim and Angel. 
Hope you're okay as well. <laughs> oh, please do keep sending where you're from. It's really lovely to hear. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Lucy, Richard and Seb. The Davis family in Northfield. Hello. Hope you're all keeping well. We've got Alison and Andrew. Thank you for joining us again. I know we didn't have a quiz yesterday, but I know some of you have been joining in the um, quizzes on a Friday as well. So um, hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you've been doing lots of quizzes during this lockdown, then hopefully this is going to help you this evening <laughs> for some of the questions that we have. Who else have we got? Hi, John. Hi, Elaine from Worcester. We've got Angela, Rob and Alexi from Selly Oak. Hello. Adam and Charlotte in how's <laughs> Hello all, here we go. So we'll, I know it's half past, but we'll just give it a couple of more minutes for people to um, join us this evening before we start, but I'll just go through them. So we have got six rounds for you this evening. We've got a music round, Who Am I? We have a TV and film round. We have a missing link round. And then we'll have a little bit of a break. And then we've got a sport round, a Birmingham round, and we also have a double point general knowledge round. So it's going to be all to play for um, at the end of the quiz with your families, if, you, if you're competing against them or your friends. So see who you will crown the comfy quiz winner this evening. We've got um, hello from the Brummy Reeds. Uh, hi, Jackie and Phil. <laughs> Who else have we got joining us? Let's have a look. Uh, joining from Watford, Kieran. Ma so joining from Watford, Manchester and Birmingham. Hello. And you're dressed in pink. Yay. You've joined in with us all dressed in pink. <laughs> so thank you very much. And I hope you have a good evening. So we've got about uh, 90 people watching us so far. So thank you everyone for joining in. And um, we really appreciate your support. A few rules. All you need is your pen and paper at the ready for the quiz. Hopefully you've got a drink as well. So cheers to you all if you have. Please don't write the answers in the comments section. Um, I will go through all the answers at the end of each round. So um, please don't comment in the comment section your answers, but please do comment your scores after each round because we always love to hear how you've got on. And let us know if you're winning as part of your family quiz night tonight. Got Jules and Alison. Hello. Team Gooders. <laughs> Andrew and Alison are in cycling gear. Excellent. <laughs> so we will begin in a few more minutes. I'll give everyone a couple of more minutes to join. Get yourselves ready. Get your pen and paper get yourself a drink and then we will begin. Hi from Adam and Liz uh, Simcox, kangaroos. And hi Kate from Chester, you're back from Chester. <laughs> so we are here this evening to support Birmingham St Mary's Hospice. So thank you all so much for um, joining us. As, um, oh, sorry, just trying to move everything. Ooh. There we go. We're fine. We're back. Uh, there we go. Sorry. Pulling, pulling my ear. Um, if you didn't hear before, I have somebody telling me um, the comments in my ear as well. So um, just if you're thinking, why has she got headphones in? It's not that I'm ignoring you. I'm just trying to hear <laughs> um, your lovely comments. So hello, Julie. Team Five Ways, gents from Harborn. Hello, all. Um, so, as I said, we are here this evening to support Birmingham St Mary's Hospice. Obviously, through the COVID-19 crisis, um, it's very difficult times for, for, for everyone. But our amazing, amazing frontline staff are still going above and beyond to support individuals living with life-limiting illness. So we're still providing care in the inpatient unit and also out in the community. We have joined together with some other hospices, so Marie Curie and John Taylor Hospice as well, and um, to provide our community um, support and try and reach as many people as possible who need us during these difficult times. 
During these difficult times, we've had to cancel events, um, we've had to fun cancel fundraising campaigns. Um, all of our shops are temporarily closed at the moment. So um, we are really so grateful for everyone's support during um, this crisis. And any support you can give this evening would be greatly appreciated. Um, it costs eight and a half million pound a year to run the hospice. So we need your support more than ever. So if you can make a donation this evening, any support would be greatly appreciated. And um, from the bottom of my, my heart and everyone at Birmingham St Mary's Hospice, we thank you for supporting us. There is a Facebook donate button on Facebook if you're on there. I've also put in the comments a link to our Just Giving page or our web page. On YouTube, I've put a link to our Just Giving page and also our um web page as well so if you would like to make a donation then um any support you can give would be greatly appreciated so thank you thank you thank you for joining us and i hope you enjoy the quiz this evening so it's 25 to 8 so i think we will begin and um if people join us they can still join in afterwards so if everyone is ready we will start with round one which is the music round the music round is a Who Am I? So can you guess the famous band or artist that I am describing? So here we go for the Comfy Quiz part two and good luck. So question number one. I am the biggest selling female artist of all time and I have starred in numerous films including Desperately Seeking Susan and Evita. So question number one. I am the biggest selling female artist of all time and I have starred in numerous films, including Desperately Seeking Susan and Evita. Hi, Kevin, Teresa and Joseph in Northfield. Hope you're okay. I've only done... I've only done one question so far, so um, hopefully, hopefully you've caught that, but I will go through them all afterwards. Question number two. We are a rock band formed in Dublin in 1976 and our fifth album, The Joshua Tree, made us international superstars. So question number two, we are a rock band formed in Dublin in 1976 and our fifth album, The Joshua Tree, made us international superstars. So if you just joined, it's a Who Am I round. So can you guess the famous band or artist? So question number three. Taron Egerton has recently played me in a film about my life and I'm known for my flamboyant costumes. Question three. Taron Egerton has recently played me in a film about my life and I'm known for my flamboyant costumes. Question number four. We won X Factor in 2011 and are still going strong today. Our most recent single is called Breakup Song. So number four, we won X Factor in 2011 and are still going strong today. Our most recent single is called Breakup Song. Just joined us. I will be going through um, all the questions again. So please do get your pen and paper at the ready and you can join in. Question number five. I first started playing the piano at four and. Oh, sorry. Get my words out. Here we go. It's starting already. I first started playing the piano at four and I have a musical called Beautiful, which is a jukebox, mus jukebox musical using the songs I wrote. The show was first performed in 2013. So question number five, I first started playing the piano at four and I have a musical called Beautiful, which is the jukebox musical using the songs I wrote. The show was first performed in 2013. Being told we've already raised 75 pounds. So thank you so much, everybody. If you were with me the other week, I could not get one of the questions out. So fingers crossed that won't happen this evening. 
but we've already just had a glimpse of it, so we'll see. <laughs> Question number six. We are a ska band from Camden Town, and our band members include Suggs, Chess Smash, Lee Thompson, and Chris Foreman. We are a ska band from Camden Town, and our band members include Suggs, Chess Smash, Lee Thompson, and Chris Foreman. Do you know who that is? Question number seven. My real name is Michael, and last year I was the headliner on the Pyramid stage at Glastonbury, where I made history. My real name is Michael, and last year I was the headliner on the Pyramid stage at Glastonbury, where I made history. <laughs> Andrew, yes, it was question eight. I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. <laughs> Don't try and make me repeat it, because I'm not doing it. <laughs> But we are on question eight now, but hopefully I'll be able to say this. <laughs> we are an English heavy metal band, which used to include Ozzy Osbourne. One of our most popular hits is called Paranoid. So we are an English heavy metal band, which used to include Ozzy Osbourne. One of our most popular hits is called Paranoid. Ozzy Osbourne, a fellow Brummie. Question number nine. My real name is Anna Mae Bullock. I started performing with Ike in the 1960s and began my solo career in the 80s. So question number nine. My real name is Anna Mae Bullock. I started performing with Ike in the 1960s and began my solo career in the 80s. I hope I've said that right, but hopefully you know who I'm on, who I'm on about. So, but do correct me if I have said it wrong. <laughs> And your last question in the music, Who Am I round? On the 30th of April in 1969, we famously performed from the rooftop, rooftop of Apple Corp's headquarters in Savile Row. So on the 30th of April 1969, we famously performed from the rooftop of Apple Corp's headquarters in Savile Row. So, oh, those are your 10 questions. So I'll go through them all again very quickly for you. So number one, I am the biggest selling female artist of all time and I have starred in numerous films, including Desperately Seeking Susan and Evita. Number two, we are a rock band formed in Dublin in 1976 and our fifth album, The Joshua Tree, made us international superstars. Number three, Taron Egerton has recently played me in a film about my life and I am known for my flamboyant costumes. Number four, we won X Factor in 2011 and are still going strong today. Our most recent single is called Breakup Song. Number five, I started playing the piano at four and I have a musical called Beautiful, which is a jukebox musical using the songs I wrote. The show was first performed in 2013. Number six, we have a ska band from Camden Town and our band members include Suggs, Chas Smash, Lee Thompson and Chris Foreman. Seven, my real name is Michael and last year I was the headliner on the Pyramid stage at Glastonbury where I made history. Number eight, we are an English heavy metal band which used to include Ozzy Osbourne. One of our most popular hits is called Paranoid. Number nine, my real name is Anna Mae Bullock. I started performing with Ike in the 1960s and began my solo career in the 80s. And number 10, on the 30th of April 1969, we famously performed from the rooftop of Apple Corp's headquarters in Savile Row. So, here we go. Oh, my dad's saying he likes this round. I promise you I haven't given him the answers, so um, we can't be done for cheating. <laughs> so then... Number one, we'll go through the answers. Let me know in the comments how many you get right. I'd love to know. Compete against each other as well and see how you get on. I won't say the um, questions again because they're quite long, so I'll just give you the answers. So number one was Madonna. Number two was U2. I just realised I put that as number two, U2. Oh, 
There we go. That was not intentional. Um, number three, Elton John. Number four was Little Mix. Number five was Carol King. Number six was Madness. Number seven was Stormzy. Number eight was Metallica. Number nine was Tina Turner. And number 10 was, of course, the Beatles. Sorry, he's not black. Sorry, I've got number eight wrong. Literally, my partner's in my ear going, it's not Metallica, it's Black Sabbath. I apologise, everyone. It's Black Sabbath, not Metallica. <laughs> so give yourselves marks out of 10. Let me know how many you've got right on the comments. Black Sabbath, not Metallica. Here we go. It started already. <laughs> Let me know, though, how many you've got. Right, we're over 100 people as well joining us. Yay! So thank you, everyone, for joining. But how did you get on that round? Yes, of course it is. Nine. Who got nine, sorry? Fran got nine. Well done. Angela got eight. Jules got nine. Oh, good round for people. Nadia got nine. Well done. How are we doing on YouTube? How many did you get right? Nigel, eight. Brian, nine. Andrew, eight. Oh, good round. Ian, eight. Catherine, nine. Cal, nine. Keith, nine. Nicola and Andrew, eight. The Kangaroos got seven. The Shermans got nine. Oh, excellent round for people. Well done. So hopefully it continues. <laughs> Eight, nine, nine. Well done. Another question. Andrew, you're right. Another question. Eight, shocker. I said Metallica instead of Black Sabbath. Eight must be my unlucky number. <laughs> Helen, you got nine out of ten. Don't think you've ever got nine before. Well, well done. Oh, well done, everyone. Fabulous round. So it's all to play for in the next rounds then. Nine. There we go. Well done, everyone. So the next round is TV and film. So these are just questions. We haven't got a specific theme or anything. It's just TV and film. So if you've got your pen and paper at the ready, it's all to play for at the moment. We will begin round two, TV and film. So number one, put these TV soaps in order from the oldest to the most recent. EastEnders, Hollyoaks, Coronation Street and Emmerdale. So put these TV soaps in order from the oldest to the most recent. EastEnders, Hollyoaks, Coronation Street and Emmerdale. I'm going to be, because you all did so well that last round, you only get one point if you get them all in the right order. So I'm going to be a bit mean. Question number two. I'm the king of the world is a quote from which film? I'm the king of the world is a quote from which film? Oh, we got a 10 out of 10. Well done. <laughs> Question number three. Which member of the Beatles narrated the first series of Thomas the Tank Engine on TV? Which member of the Beatles narrated the first series of Thomas the Tank Engine on TV? Got a harder question coming up for you. So question number four, what was the top grossing film of 2019? What was the top grossing film of 2019? Question number five. Who played Queen Elizabeth II in the first two seasons of The Crown? Who played Queen Elizabeth II in the first two seasons of The Crown? Haven't watched that. I've heard it's very good. Question number six. 
Question number six. Who was the fourth actor to play James Bond and starred as 007 for the first time in Live and Let Die? So question number six. Who was the fourth actor to play James Bond and starred as 007 for the first time in Live and Let Die? Question number seven. I need a bit of audience participation for this one. So um, I hope you go and shout at your screen for this one. You ready? So what game show is this famous catchphrase for? Nice to see you, to see you. I hope you're all shouting nice back at me. <laughs> so what game show is this famous catchphrase from? Nice to see you, to see you nice. And a bonus point for who is the famous person the catchphrase is associated to. So a bonus point for who the famous person the catchphrase is associated to. I do hope you shouted nice back at me. <laughs> Question number eight. Which movie features an iconic dance scene between Uma Thurman and John Travolta? Which movie features an iconic dance scene between Uma Thurman and John Travolta? Won £165. Thank you very much, everyone. It's very appreciated and thank you so much for your support. Question number nine. Ant and Deck first worked together on which children's TV drama? Ant and Deck first worked together on which children's TV drama? And your last question for the TV and film round. Which film won the best picture at the 2019 Oscars? Which film won the best picture at the 2019 Oscars? So I'll go through all of them again for you. Number one, put these TV soaps in order from the oldest to the most recent. EastEnders, Hollyoaks, Coronation Street and Emmerdale. Question two. I'm the King of the World is a quote from which film? Question three. Which member of the Beatles narrated the first series of Thomas the Tank Engine on TV? Question four. What was the top grossing film of 2019? Question five. Who played Queen Elizabeth II in the first two seasons of The Crown? Question six. Who was the fourth actor to play James Bond and starred as 007 for the first time in Live and Let Die? Question seven. Ready? You all ready? What game show is this famous catchphrase from? Nice to see you. To see you. Nice. And a bonus point. Who is the famous person the catchphrase is associated to? Number eight. Which movie features an iconic dance scene between Uma Thurman and John Travolta? Question nine. Ant and Deck first work together on which children's TV drama? And your last question, which film won the best picture at the 2019 Oscars? So I'll give you a little bit more time and then we'll just go through the answers again. I won't bother reading out the questions again. We'll just go through the answers so you can mark them. So here we go your round two TV and film mark and let me know in the comments how many you get right. So put these TV soaps in order. It was Coronation Street, Emmerdale, EastEnders and Hollyoaks. So you only get one point if you get them in that order. I'm going to be mean, but you all did fabulous on the music round. So, I, you know, it's all to play for. <laughs> so Coronation Street was 1960. Emmerdale was 1972. EastEnders was 1985 and Hollyoaks was 1995. I'm the King of the World is a quote from which film? It's Titanic. Ringo Starr was the first, uh, narrated the first series of Thomas the Tank Engine. Avengers Endgame was the top grossing film of 2019. Claire Foy played Queen Elizabeth II in The Crown. Roger Moore was the fourth actor to play James Bond. 
The generation game was where the catchphrase, nice to see you, to see you nice was from. And for your bonus point, it was, of course, Bruce Forsyth. Number eight was Pulp Fiction. Number nine was Biker Grove. And number 10, Green Book won the best picture at the 2019 Oscars. So please comment. Let me know how fabulous you have done this round. See how you all got on. So there was a total, so you could have got 11 uh, marks on that one. And you can put your running totals if you like as well. See how you all got on. Nine for Jules, well done. 11 for Fran, well done. Sammy, seven, well done. Adam, seven. Sherman's got 10, well done. Jackie, six. Andy, five. What else have we got? Six, six. Oh, we've got 10, 10 for Carolyn, well done. Seven. Oh, and Diane, 10 out of 11, well done. Okay. Eights, fives, tens, six for the kangaroos, having a bumpy ride, total 13. But still, we've still got four, um, no, we've still got, I can't count, four rounds to go. <laughs> Eight out of 11 for the Cloister Drive crew. 10 for Michelle, well done. Six for Kirsty, eight for Becky, eight for Brian. Oh, well done. Well done, everyone. So the next round is the missing link round. So I'm going to try and explain this for you all. And I will give you a bit of time to, to think of these as well. So don't worry. But can you name the missing word which completes the two separate phrases? So, for example, I could give you two words, biscuit and foil. And you've got to put the words in between that would make two separate phrases. So biscuit, something, something, foil. So in this case, the answer is tin because it's biscuit, tin, tin, foil. So hopefully you will get that right or all understand it. I will go through it again. Some Helen's put on here. I've played with Bruce Forsyth golf clubs in his bedroom. Should get an extra Brucey bonus point for that. <laughs> Excellent. I like that. So hopefully that all makes sense to everyone. So you've got to name the missing word which completes the two separate phrases. So, for example, if I said biscuit and foil, what would be the missing word in the middle to make two separate phrases? So biscuit something, something foil. But in this case, it's tin. So biscuit, tin, tin, foil. Hopefully that all makes sense for you. I will give you a bit of time. So I'll go through one to 10 and give you the two words and give you a bit of time to think of the answers um, in between. So number one, the two words are hair and aid. So for number one, the two words are hair and aid. So what word in the middle would make two separate phrases. Number two is thunder and trooper. Number three is fruit and ball. I'll just let you write them all down so then you've got a bit of time to think of them. Number four is foot and gown. Number five is full and walk. I don't know why I'm pointing either side with my hand either. Um, <laughs> number six is wall and socket. Number seven is doctor and grinder. Number eight is sweet and break. Number nine is match and man. And number 10 is top and trick. So you've got a link Find the missing word which completes those two separate phrases. So number one was hair and aid. Number two, thunder and trooper. Number three, fruit and ball. Number four, foot and gown. Number five, full and walk. 
Number six, wall and socket. Number seven, doctor and grinder. Number eight, sweet and break. Number nine, match and, and man. I nearly gave you the answer then. Oh, and number 10, top and trick. So if you need any repeated, put it in the comments, but hopefully you um, understand what you've got to do. Okay, sorry, that's just my dad telling me. If you need me to go through them again, I will go through them. So number one, hair and aid. So what is the middle word that is missing? Number two, thunder and trooper. Number three, fruit and ball. Number four, foot and gown. Number five, full and walk. Number six, wall and socket. Number seven, doctor and grinder. Number eight, sweet and break. Number nine, match and man. And number 10, top and trick. So I'll give you a bit of time to go through them. See how you get on. I'll go through them all one more time because I think people have missed some. So number one, hair and aid. Number two, thunder and trooper. Number three, fruit and ball. Number four, foot and gown. Number five, full and walk. Number six, wall and socket. Number seven, doctor and grinder. Number eight, sweet and break. Number nine, match and man. And number 10, top and trick so what are the missing oh thank you Kirsty <laughs> hopefully you've managed to get them all do let me know in the comments if you need any more and I'll give you um just a minute or so more to try and figure out what they are Number five, so full and walk. If you need any others, just comment on the side. So you've just got to put the missing word which completes the two separate phrases. After this, we'll have a little break so you can top up your drinks. And then we have a sport round, a Birmingham round and a double point general knowledge round. Number five, full and walk. And number eight, sweet and break. Please start commenting as well when you think you're ready for the answers. Bit of a round to make you think this one. You may have thought something that also matches, but we're, uh, we're going before what I have on my paper for what you get the mark for. <laughs> yes, Karen, five is full. F -U -L -L. F-U-L-L. Mm -hmm. 
There we go. So people are ready. Thumb and no, so we've got uh, Michelle. I'll go through them all one more time for you. So one is hair and band. Number two, thunder and trooper. Number three, fruit and ball. Oh, well. Number four, foot and gown. Number five, thumb and moon. No, sorry, full and walk. <laughs> Number six, wall and socket. Number seven, doctor and grinder. Number eight, sweet and break. Number nine, match and man. And number 10, top and trick. You'll see for that, I just gave away so many answers, so I apologise. <laughs> right, so give you all 30 seconds um, and then we will go through the answers. If you want to get a drink during this time, then please do. Number five again is full as in F U double L and walk. So I think people are starting to put their ready. Please comment if you're ready for the answers and we'll go through there. Got people saying they're ready. So I'll give you 30 more seconds and then we will go through the answers. Clock. Okay, so I think we're getting people saying they're ready. So let's go for it. Hopefully that's a bit of bit more of a trick around for you, but um hopefully it's something a bit different. <laughs> so then what were the missing words? So number one was band. So it was hair band, band aid. Number two was storm. So thunderstorm, storm trooper. Again, don't know why I'm using my hands to try and explain that. <laughs> Number three was basket. So fruit basket, basketball. Number four was ball. So football, ball gown. Number five, I think I gave the answer away to this, so apologies, but it's moon. So full moon, moon walk. Number six was plug. So wall plug, plug socket. Number seven was pepper. So Dr. Pepper, pepper grinder. Number eight was heart. So sweetheart, heartbreak. Number nine was stick. So matchstick and then stick man. And number 10 was hat. So top hat, hat trick. So number one again was band. Number two was storm. Number three, basket. Number four, ball. Number five, moon. Number six, plug. Number seven, pepper. Number eight, heart. Number nine, stick. And number 10, hat. So let me know on the comments how well you did on that round. We're going to have a little break as well. Adam, eight, well done. So please go and top up your drinks. We'll have a bit of a break and then we'll come back for the sports round um, in a few minutes. So I'll just give you a little chance to go and get yourself sorted. Lots of eight, seven, well done. Eight, nine, well done. Nine again, nine. Got eight, nine, total of 24, well done. Eight, nine, nine, well done everyone. Nine, oh, good round for everyone again. Okay, I might be going to make them trickier next time. <laughs> 
But please do go. Um, we'll just have a little short break. 10 out of 10, Kieran. Well done. Um, we'll have a little break. Um, but as I said, we are all here this evening to support Birmingham St. Mary's Hospice. Um, we are still providing hospice care during these times. Our amazing frontline um, workers are going above and beyond to make sure we continue to provide care to individuals living with life-limiting illness and their families as well. So any support you can give this evening would be greatly appreciated. We have a Facebook donate button for all of you watching on Facebook. I've also put the link on there for um, Just Giving and also our webpage. And then for everyone on YouTube, we have, um, I've put at the very top the Just Giving link and the webpage, but I will comment it again now for you. And any support you can give would be greatly appreciated so thank you so 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 much <laughs> we thought you said bowl not ball so we said salad <laughs> I like that one um I'm gonna let you decide for that yourself <laughs> so I'm just gonna share the just given link again on um YouTube and also the link to the web page. Yeah. And I've just been told we're on £190. So thank you so much, everyone, for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Um, we are also doing a um, like social media campaign as well called Dress Up For. So we're encouraging people to dress up. At the moment, we all may be at home in like trackies or pyjamas, but we're encouraging people to dress up for Birmingham St. Mary's Hospice. So whether you dress up for a work meeting or you dress up for a night with your friends on Zoom or you dress up in fancy dress just because you want to. So we're asking people to um, dress up, take a selfie, post it on Instagram or Facebook and put dress up for we're then asking you to donate £4 to the hospice and then decide on four people that you would like to take on the Dress Up For Challenge. So if anybody would like to take part in that, if you head to our website, um, which is www.birminghamhospice.org.uk, you can find out more. So we'll give people another minute or so, um, but please do comment ready when you're back with your drinks. And we will begin round four, which is the sport round. Did anybody do anything for their VE Day celebrations as well? Do you have street parties? Let me know. And comment when you're... You're back and ready to begin the next rounds. So we've got three rounds left. We have a sport round, we have a Birmingham round, and we have a general knowledge double point round, which is exciting. Getting a few people saying ready. So I'll Give people another minute to get themselves ready and get back, and then we will carry on. Okay. So the next round is a sports round, but all the answers are numbers. So in the sport round, all the answers are numbers. So lots of people saying they're ready. I'll just give it another 30 seconds and then we will begin the sport round. YouTube hopefully is doing okay today. So fingers crossed it stays. <laughs> and we seem to be all right on Facebook as well. So there we go. £205 on Facebook now. Thank you so much, everyone. 
It's very appreciated. I think we've got about 100 people watching, so thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Right then, I think we are ready to begin. Oh, thank you, Steve. Um, I think we are ready to begin the next round. So sports round is your round four for the comfy quiz part two. So all the answers are number related. So all the answers are numbers. So I think we are ready to begin and we shall start. Um, if you come in a bit late, we'll go for the uh, questions again afterwards anyway, but we shall begin. So your number, question number one for your sport round, remember all the answers are numbers. How many Red Bulls are there in snooker? So number one, how many Red Bulls are there in snooker? Question number two. Rebecca Adlington won two gold medals at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. She won her gold medals in the 800 metre freestyle and which other freestyle event? So number two, Rebecca Adlington won two gold medals at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. She won her gold medals in the 800 metre freestyle and which other freestyle event? If you just joined us, don't worry, I'll go through uh, the questions again afterwards. Question number three. What are the numbers either side of the 20 on a dartboard? So what are the numbers either side of, of the 20 on a dartboard? Because you're all doing so well. I am only going to give you one point for if you get both the numbers. Again, being mean, but you are doing fabulous. So it could be make or break. <laughs> Question number four. In cricket, if you get out for a duck, how many runs did you score? So in cricket, if you get out for a duck, how many runs did you score? Question number five. What is the maximum number of clubs a golfer is, a is allowed to carry in his or her bag in a round of golf? So what is the maximum number of, of clubs a golfer is allowed to carry in his or her bag in a round of golf? Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Question number six. In pounds, what weight does a male boxer have to be over to become heavyweight? Is it 150, 200 or 250? So in pounds, what weight does a male boxer have to be over to become heavyweight? Is it 150, 200 or 250 pounds? Question number seven. In gymnastics, how many pieces of apparatus would a female gymnast compete on if she was taking part in an all-round final? So in gymnastics, how many pieces of apparatus would a female gymnast compete on if she was taking part in an all-round final? Question eight, excluding stoppage time, how many minutes of football would be played before going to a penalty shootout? So excluding stoppage time, how many minutes of football would be played before going to a penalty shootout? Question. 
question number nine. How many times have New Zealand and South Africa won the Rugby World Cup? Question nine. How many times have New Zealand and South Africa won the Rugby World Cup? And your last question in the sports round, how many games do you need to win to win a set in tennis? So how many games do you need to win to win a set in tennis? So I'll go through all of them again um, for you. So sport round, all the answers are numbers. Number one, how many red balls are there in snooker? Number two, Rebecca Adlington, won two gold medals at the 2008 Beijing Olympics. She won her gold medals in the 800 meter freestyle and which other freestyle event? Number three, what are the numbers either side of the 20 on a dartboard? Number four, in cricket, if you get out for a duck, how many runs did you score? Number five, what is the maximum number of Got, uh, blah, blah, blah. This is my question number, right, again. Number five, what is the maximum number of clubs a golfer is allowed to carry in his or her bag in a round of golf? Number six, in pounds, what weight does a male boxer have to be over to become heavyweight? Is it 150, 200 or 250 pounds? Number seven, in gymnastics, how many pieces of apparatus would a female gymnast compete on if she was taking part in an all-round final? Number eight, excluding stoppage time, how many minutes of football would be played before going to a penalty shootout? Number nine, how many times have New Zealand and South Africa won the Rugby World Cup? And number 10, how many games do you need to win to win a set in tennis? So I'll give you all a few seconds and then we will go through the answers. Look. I've raised 274 pounds so far. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, it's really appreciated. So thank you. So then we will go through the answers for the sport round. So, number one, there are 15 Red Bulls in snooker. Number two, Rebecca Adlington won gold in the 400 metre freestyle as well as the 800 metre. Number three, it's one and number one and number five on either side of the 20 on a dartboard. So, give yourself one point if you got them both right. You score no runs if you are out for a duck in cricket. You are allowed to, number five, you're allowed to um, carry 14 clubs in your bag in a round of golf. Number six, to be classed as heavyweight, you have to be over 200 pounds. Number seven, um, in gymnastics, if a female was taking part in an all-round final, she would be taking part in four apparatus. So that would be beam, floor, uneven bars and vault. Number eight, excluding top stoppage time, how many minutes the football would be played before going to a penalty shootout? It's 120 minutes. So you have your 60 minutes. Uh, no, sorry. Nine, no, no. Yeah, 120. I'm just trying to figure it out in my head. You've got your 30 minutes of extra time and then your um, a full game before that. 90 minutes. There we go. Um, how many times have New Zealand and South Africa won the Rugby World Cup? It is three. And you need to win six games to win a set in tennis. So mark up your answers. Let me know how many you got right. Start the answers again, no worries. So I'll go for them quickly again. So one was 15, two was 400 meters, three was one and five, four was zero, no runs, five was 14, six was 200 pounds, 
7 was 4, 8 was 120 minutes, 9 was 3, and 10 was 6. So how have you all got on? 8, 9, 4, 7, what we've got over here, 7, 6, 8, look, oh. some 7, 9, 7. The kangaroo's fourth round marks at eight would have been nine if wife and not overawed husband. <laughs> what um what question was that on? I'd like to know. Seven, five, seven. Well done, everyone. Six out of ten, seven. Couple of lucky guesses. Well done. Nine for the Brummy Reeds. Number one again. So number one was um 15. And number eight was 120 minutes. And question six was 200 pounds. Oh, sorry. So six, you got overruled on the 200 pounds. There we go. <laughs> well done, everyone. So five, eight, well done. So our next round is a Birmingham round. Don't worry, you don't have to be from going to know the answers and um, so hopefully you'll all be okay <laughs> here we go so round five Birmingham rounds are we ready so we've only got two more rounds to go we've got Birmingham round and then the double point general knowledge round so your first question in the Birmingham round true or false Birmingham supplied pens for 75% of what the 19th century world wrote. So number one, true or false. Birmingham supplied pens for 75% of what the 19th century world wrote. Oh, answer to number seven from the last round is four. Number two, it is said that Birmingham has more miles of canals than Venice, but how many miles of canals does it have? Is it 30 miles, 35 miles or 40 miles? So it is said that Birmingham has more miles of canals than Venice, but how many miles of canals does it have? Is it 30 miles, 35 miles or 40 miles? Question number three. Christopher Graham Collins is the real name of which Brummy comedian? So Christopher Graham Collins is the real name of which Brummy comedian? Question four. Which tea brand was founded in Birmingham? So number four, which tea brand was founded in Birmingham? Question five, Jasper Carrot was born in Acox Green. But what game show did he use to present where players could share or steal the money at the end of the show? So Jasper Carrot was born in Acox Green. But what game show did he use to present where players could share or steal the money at the end of the show? Blast from the past, that one. Question number six. Who is the author of The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit who lived in nine homes in the south of Birmingham during his formative years? So who is the author of The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit who lived in nine homes in the south of Birmingham during his formative years? Question number seven. 
If you say someone is yampy, what are you calling them? So if you say someone is yampy, what are you calling them? Question number eight. Lenny Henry is a chancellor for which Birmingham University? So Lenny Henry is a chancellor for which Birmingham University? Question nine. How many flat platforms does Birmingham New Street Station have? How many platforms does Birmingham New Street Station have? And your last question in the Birmingham round. Red Red Wine and Food for Thought is a song by which Brummie band? So Red Red Wine and Food for Thought is a song by which, well, our songs by which Brummie band? So I'll go through all of them again for your Birmingham round. True or false, Birmingham supplied pens for 75% of what the 19th century world wrote. Number two, it is said that Birmingham has more miles of canals than Venice, but how many miles of canals does it have? 30 miles, 35 miles or 40 miles? Number three, Christopher Graham Collins is the real name of which Brummie comedian? Number four, which tea brand was founded in Birmingham? Number five, Jasper Carrot was born in Acox Green, but what game show did he use to present where players could share or steal the money at the end of the show? Number six, who is the author of The Lords of the Rings and The Hobbit who lived in nine homes in the south of Birmingham during his formative years? Number seven, if you say someone is Yampy, what are you calling them? Number eight, Lenny Henry is a chancellor for which Birmingham University? Number nine, how many platforms does Birmingham New Street have? And number 10, Red Red Wine and Food for Thought are songs by which Brummie band? So that is your Birmingham round. I'll give you a couple of seconds to just get your answers together and then we'll go through the answers. Now we only have one round left, which is double point general knowledge. So if you're playing against people, that could make all the difference. <sighs> So then we will go through the answers. So number one was true. We've got the Penn Museum in Birmingham. So you can go and visit that. Number two was 35 miles. Number three was Frank Skinner. Number four is Typhoon. Number five is Golden Balls. Number six is J.R.R. Tolkien. Number seven is daft or silly, if you call somebody yampy. Number eight, Lenny Henry, Henry is Chancellor for Birmingham City University. Number nine, there was 12 platforms. And number 10, the uh, Brummy Band is UB40. So let me know how you got on with that. And then we'll go on to our last round. Let's go for the ans answers again. Number one is true. Number two, 35 miles. Number three, Frank Skinner. Number four, Typhoon. Number five, Golden Balls. Number six, J.R.R. Tolkien. Number seven is Daft or Silly. Number seven is Birmingham City University. Number nine is 12. And number 10 is UB40. So we've got six for Liz or for the kangaroos, nine for Brummy Reeds, well done. Eight from Jackie, well done for Jackie and Phil. And what have we got here? Number one was true. Oh, Karen, 10 out of 10, well done. Nine out of 10 for Lucy. Jules, nine. Kirsty, seven. Jill, did you get the answers? Comment again if you didn't and I can read them out. 
Fran nine, well done. Alison seven. Nigel seven. Terrible round for the Bristol Reeds, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sally seven, Keith seven. Carolyn's eight. Eight, well done. The Cloister Drive crew, six. Only four. Well, it's all to play for for the next round. So like I said, we have got a double point general knowledge round for you now. So this could make all the difference if you are playing against other people. And we'll do that. No worries, Michelle. Do you need any of the answers again? Let me know. Well done, Karen. Ten. Go. I'll just see if anybody else needs those answers again. And then... Yeah. I'll leave a bit more time on this next one. I'll go through the answers again for um, that round. So number one was true. Number two was 35 miles. Number three was Frank Skinner. Number four was Typhoon. Number five was Golden Balls. Number six was J.R.R. Tolkien. Number seven was Daft and Silly or Silly. Number eight was Birmingham City University. Number nine was 12. And number 10 was UB40. We're going. Right, we'll go through the last round then. So the last round is a general knowledge double points. So you get one point for one correct answer in the pair. And if you get both answers correct in the pair, you double up to four points. So each question is going to have, um, so number one will have two questions. So if you get the first bit right out of that question, you get one point. If you get the second bit right out of that question, you double up to four points. Um, if you get the first bit of the question wrong, um, but still get the second bit of the question right, then you just get the one point. So it's all to play for, for your double point general knowledge round. So this is the last round of the evening and hopefully we will begin. So question number one. Steve Jobs is one of the founders of which technology brand? So Steve Jobs is one of the founders of which technology brand? I'll let you answer that before I go on to the next bit of that question. So the next bit of that question is, what was the name of the other co-founder? So what was the name of the other co-founder? We're on £259 on Facebook. So thank you, everyone who's donated. So number one, your first bit of the question is, Steve Jobs is one of the founders of which technology brand? And then your second part to that question is what was the name of the other co-founder? Question number two. So the first part of the question is, which former first lady has a book called Becoming? So which former first lady has a book called Becoming? And then your second part to that question is what was her job before she, before she became the first lady? So what was her job before she became the first lady? So I'll do number two for you again. Which former first lady has a book called Becoming? And the second part of the question, what was her job before she became the first lady? Question number three. 
Which Midlands football team has the biggest stadium? So your first part of the question is which Midlands football team has the biggest stadium? And then the second part to that question, in which year did this team last get relegated from the Premier League? So in which year did this team last get relegated from the Premier League? So number three is which Midlands football team has the biggest stadium? And then your second part to that question is in which year did this team last get relegated from the Premier League? Question number four. Which famous whiskey originates from the state of Tennessee? So which famous whiskey originates from the state of Tennessee? And your second part to that question is what is their latest flavour of whiskey to be released? So what is their latest flavour of whiskey to be released? So number four, the first part is which famous whiskey originates from the state of Tennessee? And the second part, what is their latest flavour of whiskey to be released? Question number five, Eau de Toilet is another name for what product? I think I'm saying that right. Eau de Toilet is another name for what product? Apologies if I am not. <laughs> And your second part to that question is Eau de Toilet is literally, in French, is literally translated to what? So Eau de Toilet in French is literally translated to what? If you know French, then hopefully that's a good question for you. Question number six. The Rock was the pro wrestling name of which American actor? So The Rock was the pro wrestling name of which American actor? And your second part to that question. What film did he recently co-star in with Kevin Hart and Jack Black? What film did he recently co-star in with Kevin Hart and Jack Black? So the first bit is The Rock was the pro wrestling name of which American actor? And the second part of your question, what film did he recently co-star in with Kevin Hart and Jack Black? Question number seven, what is considered to be the most common last name in England? What is considered to be the most common last name in England? And this might help you with this. So the second part of your question, who played Violet Crawley in the TV series Downton Abbey? 
who played Violet Crawley in the TV series Downton Abbey. So seven again, the first bit of the question, what is considered to be the most common last name in England? And then the second part of the question, who played Violet Crawley in the TV series Downton Abbey? Question number eight. Who currently plays the Doctor in Doctor Who? So who currently plays the Doctor in Doctor Who? And your second part to that question, how many Doctors have there been all together? So how many Doctors have there been all together? So your first part to that question, who currently plays the Doctor in Doctor Who? And the second part to that question, how many Doctors have there been all together? Your last two questions of the comfy quiz. So question number nine, the Da Vinci Code was written by which author? So the Da Vinci Code was written by which author? And your second part to that question, who played the lead role in the film adaptation? So who played the lead role in the film adaptation? So your first part of that question was the Da Vinci Code was written by which author? And the second part, who played the lead role in the film adaptation? And this is your last question in the comfort quiz part two. So what is the highest mountain in Britain? What is the highest mountain in Britain? And your second part of it is how tall is it? Is it 1,345 metres, 1,472 metres or 1,561 metres? So your second part to the question, how tall is it? Is it 1,345 metres, 1,472 metres or 1,561 metres? So you could potentially get 40 marks on um, on this. Good luck. I'll go through them all one more time. So number one, Steve Jobs is one of the founders of which technology brand? Second part to the question, what was the name of the other co-founder? Number two, which former first lady has a book called Becoming? Second part of the question, what was her job before she became the first lady? Number three, which Midlands football team has the biggest stadium? Second part of the question, in which year did this team get last get relegated from the Premier League? Number four, which famous whiskey originates from the state of Tennessee? The second part of the question, what is their latest flavour of whiskey to be released? Number five, eau de toilette is another name for what product? Second part of the question, eau de toilette in French is literally translated to what? Number six, The Rock was the pro wrestling name of which American actor? The second part of the question, what film did he recently co-star in with Kevin Hart and Jack Black? Number seven, what is considered to be the most common last name in England? Second part to the question, who played Violet Crawley in the TV series Downton Abbey? Number eight, who currently plays the Doctor in Doctor Who? 
The second part of the question, how many doctors have there been altogether? Number nine, the Da Vinci Code was written by which author? And the second part of the question, who played the lead role in the film adaptation? And then your last question, what is the highest mountain in Britain? And how is it 1,345 metres? 1,472 metres or 1,561 metres. So the scoring for this works. So if you get both answers correct in the pair, you double up to four points, um, but you only get one point for one correct answer in the pair. But I'll explain that when I go through the answers. And then we have completed the Come for Quiz part two. So thank you so much for joining. Give you a few more seconds and then we will go through the answers. So there we go. Question one then. The answer to the first part of the question was Apple. So give yourself a point for that if you got it right. And then what was the name of the other co-founder? It was Steve Wozniak. So if you got both of those right, you get four points. But if you only got one of them right, you just give yourself one point. So it's all to play for. Question two, the first lady who had a book called Becoming was Michelle Obama. And her job before she became the first lady was a lawyer. So if you got both of those right, you get four points or just one point if you just got one of them. Number three, the biggest stadium in the Midlands is Aston Villa. Yay! And um, the year they last got relegated was 2016. I'll let you into a little secret about that. My partner wrote this round and you can probably tell that he's a West Brom fan because the uh, question was, what? when did we last get relegated? So, not happy. <laughs> question number four was um, the whiskey that originates from state of Tennessee is Jack Daniels and their latest flavour is apple. Wonder how that tastes. If anyone's tried it, let me know. Does it taste nice? Number five, eau de toilette is another name for what product? It's perfume or cologne and it literally translates in French to toilet water or more commonly described as grooming water. So I think that's why they don't call it toilet water. <laughs> Question number six. The Rock is um, the Rock was the pro wrestling name of which American actor? It's Dwayne Johnson. And the film he recently starred in with Kevin Hart and Jack Black was Jumanji. Great film if you haven't watched it. I would recommend. Number seven. Smith is considered to be the most common last name. And Maggie Smith played Violet Crawley in a TV series, Downton Abbey. Number eight, Jodie Whittaker currently plays the Doctor in Doctor Who. And there have been 13 Doctors all together. Number nine, Dan Brown was the author who wrote The Da Vinci Code. And it was Tom Hanks who played the lead role in the film adaptation. And your last answers for the comfy quiz this evening. Ben Nevis is the highest mountain in Britain and it is 1,345 metres tall. So add up all your answers. Like I said, it could be make or break that round. If you got um, quite a few four points there, well done. <laughs> Let me know how many you got right and then calculate it all together um, and let me know how well you've done overall on the quiz. I'd love to hear. We'll see if we can find who got the most. Let's have a look. So Adam, 27. Well done. Like I said, you could get a possible 40 out of that round. 
37 out of 40, well done. Oh, you're welcome, Vicky. Thank you for joining. 28 from Mandrew, well done. 31 from Nigel, 37 from Carolyn. How are we doing on YouTube? Let me know. Let me know how many you've got overall as well for the whole quiz. 28, you've got 40 total for the quiz, 86. Well done, Fran and Steve. 20 out of 40 for that round, 27, well done. Sherman's got 31 in that round. 33 for Cloister Drive Crew, well done. 64 in total from Adam and Charlotte, well done. How many did you get all together? 71 out of 81, 37 out of 40, 77 in total, well done. 67 for the whole quiz, 71, 67. Thank you for some quiz. <laughs> total of 46, but it's the taking part that counts, Andy, so thank you very much. <laughs> 67 overall, 71 altogether. 63, 75. So I think 80 was the highest that I've seen so far. I mean, I was Fran and Steve. But do keep commenting, let me know. 52, 67, 57 in total from Nicola. Oh, well, thank you everyone for joining us. I think 80 something has been the highest so far. Um, we really appreciate you um, joining us this evening for the Comfort Quiz Part 2. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed it. Um, doing it for you. Any any support you can give to Birmingham St Mary's Hospice really would be greatly appreciated, especially through these difficult times. So if you would like to make a donation for taking part this evening, you can through Facebook, through Just Giving or through our webpage. Any support really is um, appreciated. So thank you so, so much for joining me. Do keep commenting and then scroll through and see if you were the winners. I think 80 is the highest or 80 something is the highest I've seen so far from Fran and Steve. So well done. Um, and thank you all for, for joining me. Do keep commenting. And, um, oh, keep going. Oh, thank you all very much for your very kind words as well. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. And um, as always, we just are so grateful for all your support and for continuing to, continuing to support us. Um, I know it's very difficult times at the moment, but hopefully that has just spread a little cheer on your Saturday evening over the bank holiday weekend. And you've uh, been able to enjoy that with me this evening. So thank you so, so much. I'm going to let you have a drink Cheers to you all. Enjoy the rest of your evening and I will see you all very soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Facebook. And then we'll say bye to YouTube. Thank you.